35 seconds of logos. I'm sure I'm glad Ian Holm is here to remind me of that unpopular trilogy of movies that came out more than 10 years ago. Peter Jackson only teases Dragon even though he knows you bought the ticket expecting to see Dragon. This is a lot of exposition even for a Lord of the Rings movie. It began as you might expect. If he's writing all the to Frodo, why does he need to do the whole it began in a hole in the ground crap? Oh, hey Frodo, what are you doing in this movie? Not a damn thing. This is a terrible way to store bread. This red-headed guy is instantly replaced by this other Aragorn Jr. Dwarf doors are invisible. Yeah, except when a huge dragon wants to come in. Stay out late. Come home after dark, trailing mud and twigs and fireflies. Gandalf is basing all of his faith in Bilbo on things that all kids do at that age. If the dwarves spent as much time training to fight dragons as they did singing, this trilogy would be over by now. Are the dwarves supposed to have blown out this candle that's still smoking like three seconds ago before leaving, or does Peter Jackson not know how candles work? It takes 43 minutes for this film's actual adventure to begin, and the first thing they do is go to sleep and tell more boring dwarf stories. He's a gentle soul who prefers the company of animals, keeps a watchful eye over the vast forest land. So he's the Unabomber. Still a better death scene than Miranda Tate's in Dark Knight Rises. Even for a kid's movie, this is pretty f***ing ridiculous. No horses were harmed in the making of the scenes that have no horses. These ropes aren't remotely tight or secure. While the weed smoking sort of helps explain this crazy wizard character, I'm not sure it fits a kid's movie full of snot and fart jokes. I'm just saying. They will outrun you! These are Roscabel rabbits! I'd like to see them try. On the one hand, this guy just smoked weed, but on the other hand, he knows a lot more about rabbits than I do, so... Let him go. Radagast immediately forgets his objective is to lead the orcs away from the dwarves and just goes in circle. Bilbo's sword isn't glowing despite the fact that there are tons of orcs around. Man, Middle Earth simply did not believe in handrails. Is this the same spot where Frodo got stabbed in Fellowship? Are you really just cramming in every single possible connection to the other trilogy that you can? It's his excessive consumption of mushrooms. Jeez, the guy smokes weed and does shrooms? I think maybe all it takes to be a wizard in Middle-earth is a drug habit and a robe. Because there is none. Is Sauron supposed to already be evil here, or is he just a dick? Yeah, this always seems to happen. I start playing Final Fantasy VII, but I end up playing Shadow of the Colossus. So the goblins built this entire collapsible floor just in case somebody came by and wanted to sleep here for a while? This fall would definitely kill Bilbo if this movie wasn't taking place in a physics-free zone. Man, no one tell Radagast about this place. Didn't Gandalf say, The blade is of elvish make, which means to glow blue when orcs or goblins are nearby. And didn't Elrond say that this sword was of elvish make? So then why isn't this blade glowing near all these goblins? Or Gandalf's sword, Glamdring. Also made by elves. Rings don't land on fingers like this, unless you're in Middle Earth, where it happens in the first movie of every trilogy. You can totally tell where the video game and the movie sort of became one. See, no physics allowed in Middle Earth. We're supposed to care about this perilous journey that isn't remotely perilous for anyone. This kill is lucky, but this kill is downright inexcusable. How does this blow not take his face right off? A minute ago, Azog wanted Thorin to himself, then he changes his mind and orders a henchman to do it, giving Bilbo just enough time to save the day. Eagles? Again? Is that the only way Tolkien knows how to resolve things? This rock looks like a bear. What is this, cars? This is the single stupidest place the eagles could possibly have dropped off the dwarves, and now they have to make a dangerous climb down a steep f***ing rock. Wait, that's the Lonely Mountain? Well, sh Why didn't the eagles just fly them all the way there? Take them like 15 minutes. I mean, seriously. What do the eagles have to be doing right now that was unimportant enough to stop doing it to come rescue the dwarves, but that they couldn't also spend a few more minutes to fly them all the way to their f***ing destination? Yet another carrot-eating Peter Jackson cameo. These assassins are terrible at sneaking up on their victim. Or were they hired by the real assassins to serve as decoy assassins, maybe? I should introduce myself. My name is Gandalf. Unnecessary flashback is unnecessary. You are the heir to the throne of Durin. Man, does anyone in Middle-earth do anything at all without Gandalf putting the idea in their head? Is Middle-earth just Gandalf's personal life-size dollhouse? Beneath the feet of a fire-breathing dragon. I can't stress enough how much light this conversation sheds on the events we saw in the first film. It's zero. And they run down by a pack of orcs. You could maybe try calling the eagles. I mean, sh it can't have gotten too far away since they just dropped you off a little bit ago. Here's another reason the books don't matter, when the filmmakers can't insert just one sentence explaining why the eagles could only take them so far. And that's all it would have taken. He will help us, or he will kill us. Why does Gandalf waste time acting like the bear beast thing isn't Bayorn, the owner of the house they decide to go to in order to seek refuge from the bear beast thing? You know what would have really helped in this situation? Someone who knows magic. None of the other dwarves saw this? Oh good, more fleshed out villain characters that either barely appear in the book or aren't in the book at all. Awesome. That probably won't add to the bloat at all. Also, this bold guy is a discount Azog. 
He looks exactly like Azog, but with metal in his flesh. No, man, I'm off it. Maybe blind in one eye. There are others like you. Once there were many. Bayorn answers a softball question in a vague manner so that Bilbo has to clarify what the hell he meant by that. Which is why we must go through Mirkwood. The darkness lies upon that forest. This pretty much should go without saying in Middle-earth by now, right? Is there a forest that doesn't have some sort of darkness lying upon it? I don't like dwarves. They're greedy. But I usually save such opinions until I've already been a good host by serving food and drink to them. Is there no way around? Not unless we go 200 miles north. Middle-earth uses miles for distance measurement? We interrupt this unnecessary Hobbit sequel to bring you the Lost World Jurassic Park. Oh, come on. How did Bilbo get access to his sword after being spun into a cocoon? I mean, look at this. Does this look like something anyone would be able to move their arms and legs around in? Also, Bilbo would have had to have easy access to his sword to be able to unsheathe it while inside a cocoon, and he clearly didn't have it out when he got caught in the web. Fortunately for Bilbo, the spiders dragged all the dwarves to one place before eating them, making them easier to rescue, because everyone knows spiders prefer to eat family style. Nearly every f***ing spider has to go check and see what that noise was. It's also fortunate that there are all these layers of spider web to catch each of the falling dwarves and ease them to the ground, especially considering the spider that Bilbo just stabbed fell down and hit the ground hard. Oh, come on, that thing fell and bounced and is definitely lost forever. If you're going to say the ring wants to be found because it has a mind of its own, then it shouldn't ever fly out of his control in the f***ing first place. Oh, look, Legolas is in this movie. Is Batman in it too? Or 007? That's my wee lad, Gimli. You know, from Lord of the Rings? The popular series of books and movies? We are witnessing the George Lucasification of Peter Jackson with these Hobbit movies. There's no doubt about it. It always is. Aren't you going to search me? I could have anything down my trousers. That's a pickup line I have not tried, but I'm going to now. Oh god. Because she's f***ing hot! Also, why does Legolas give a sh that this dwarf is staring at her? Does he know that this very unlikely elf dwarf love story is about to happen? We offer you a deal. I told him he could go Ishkarkve on Dorgnol. How is an elf supposed to do that? Why do you linger in the shadows? I was coming to report- Toriel is hiding from view for no reason so that we could have this manufactured suspense moment. There are always unguarded gates, aren't there? Unlikely elf dwarf love story. I have walked there sometimes. Beyond the forest and up into the night. Good God, this movie is two and a half hours, and now we know why. These empty barrels should have been sent back to Eskaroth hours ago. The bargemen will be waiting for them. Bilbo shows up at the exact moment the elves talk about the barrels and where they go, and luckily they were speaking English and not Elvish. Bilbo! What? <laughs> Shh! There are gods nearby! Obviously there aren't. Theme park water ride action sequence. Is this the unguarded gate that Bolg was talking about? Because this shit is heavily guarded. In fact, it takes all of them getting distracted by Bilbo and the dwarves in order for the orcs to make an attack. Were the orcs expecting this? Bolg yells after them, and there are instant orcs waiting for the dwarves downriver. Wait a minute, that sounds like Keeley falling into a barrel. Also, this orc has to growl just before killing her, and stabs at nothing in particular. Staple sword. Oh good, this orc had an axe. Exactly the tool I'll need later when we chop a log. Everyone with an axe has the current carrying their barrel to the exact spot they need to make this happen. Also, the B-team of orcs were really heavy on axes, weren't they? When we saw the battle start, most of them had swords, bows and arrows, maybe a mace, but axes didn't come into play until the dwarves needed them. Everything this sequence is and stands for. These dwarves had a spare barrel floating down the river with them and were able to keep it around just in case this shit happened. Movie wants to have a sense of danger in some moments, but in other moments, do this shit. Orc raises his f you sword twice to kill Legolas so that Thorn can kill the orc. So you're telling me that Toriel was running toward Legolas, saw this orc, and measured her shot so that she could deflect his arrow? Also, how convenient is it that she pulls off this badass shot instead of killing him since Legolas wants to keep this orc alive anyway? Discount Inigo Montoya. A shadow that grows in the dark. How much of this movie's runtime is devoted to veiled references to Sauron? I'd wager it's at least 20 minutes. You were tracking the company of 13 dwarves. No, 13. The Blackhead Archer. We stuck him with a Morgul shaft. There is no f***ing reason why this orc would make mention of Keeley other than to distress Toria. But this orc doesn't know about that love story, so this is completely pointless. Manos Tariel. Manos Sen. Edivina Benedor. Enunandolen. Well, we assumed she didn't return, or else this story would be stupid. Come on now, lads. Turn out your pockets. Because you all surely have loose change in there after all the shit you've been through in the last movie and this one. There we are. All in order. Not. 
so fast. Yet another bullshit false conflict that bogs this movie down to a nearly three hour run length. It seems like these guys have dumped enough fish to see some dwarves, but when Alfred tells the guys to stop, it looks like no fish have been dumped out of the barrels at all. They've been led on by troublemakers. Then we must find these troublemakers. There was a huge pause in the conversation while the master got up, walked out of his bedroom, and halfway down the stairs before responding. Stephen Colbert 1, Tom Bombadil 0. Human Rube Goldberg messaging system. Cute scene, but how the fuck did they know where to swim to get here? How did Bilbo and the dwarves jump into the water without being seen? Wait, does this family directly into the lake? Why are there dwarves climbing out of our toilet? Will they bring us luck? That's racist. King beneath the mountain shall come into his own. Prophecies, man. Dwarf stairs. Also, Armory has a convenient open window so that people can steal from it. How many weapons does this guy need to carry? Couldn't they just pass them down to the stair dwarves outside and make a quiet pile? Arrow after arrow he shot. Each one missing its mark. These assholes make it sound like shooting a flying dragon is easy. I speak to the master of the men of the lake. Will you see the prophecy fulfilled? The prophecy that mentions the lake being set on fire? Sure, what the hell, right? This horn. No one will help us. Why will no one help you? Everyone in this town f loves dwarves now. What the f The desolation of Smaug. Roll credits. Please. The rabbit drawn sleigh. Up here! You have keen eyes, Master Baggins. What? Really? It takes keen eyes to spot a maze pattern pillar that reaches up to the top of the mountain? We've lost the light. There's no more to be done. Bull we walked all this f***ing way and nearly died a million times. Give me the f***ing key and I'll drag it along the rock until it hits a keyhole. How has this asshole been breathing underneath a mountain of gold the whole time? The Arkenstone is conveniently 20 f***ing feet from where Bilbo is standing in a great underground kingdom the size of Minneapolis. Oh, come on. How did these assholes know Bard would be running through here? Lake Town is a twisty nightmare of directions, and they were hiding out here for whatever reason? Holy sh Gandalf's gonna need a lot of eagles to get out of this jam. Also, Sauron bitches out instead of killing Gandalf when he has the chance. So it is true. The Black Arrow found its mark. And Bilbo seriously says out loud the one weakness the dragon has and is out of this world fortunate the dragon didn't hear it properly. Again, the Arkenstone magically finds its way to an area right next to Bilbo. So here's Boffer looking for King's Foil, which we remember him going out to get 20 minutes ago in movie time. And it's perfect timing because the orcs see him and know which house to attack. Here's the problem. When Boffer first started looking for this weed, Bard was still in his house. Since that time, Bard runs out, gets captured, the orcs arrive much later, and this asshole is just now finding King's foil? And since Bard says, We feed it to the pigs, this should have taken like five minutes at most to find. Damn it, elves, do you ever arrive before an attack? Maybe if there were fewer than 13 of these dwarves, I might actually care that one of them is about to die. Oh, now we see why it took so long for Boffer to get the King's foil. It's so that She-Elf could save Handsome Dwarf and serve the love story. Also, if Toriel doesn't show up, how do they expect to use the King's Foil? It looks like it requires a lot of chanting and special elf leg rubbing and glowing. Dragon that can smell dwarves even when they're outside the mountain can't smell them when they're right underneath them. Eon's old dragon is fooled by the old hey look over here gag. It's almost like they wrote the script for the dwarves to escape and then designed the set to match. Jesus, it's like the world's most elaborate dragon escape system built centuries in advance of its being needed. Oh no, I sure hope Legolas lives through this... Oh wait, he's in fellowship. So this is a pointless bit of fluff. Fire resistant fire escaping rope. How is Smaug not affecting this rope in any way? His sheer size should tangle the series of ropes coming down this shaft and thus affect Thorn's descent. Also, use your f***ing fire, dude! Or why not just cut the rope with your talons? Make him fall to his death. Here's this trick I learned where I can balance a dwarf on my mouth. The only problem is it takes me a really long time to kill anything while I'm doing it. Oh, sure. Now use your fire. With no fire hot enough to set them ablaze. Have we not? I don't know if you do or not. Seems like Smaug only uses his fire when it's pointless, but I'm sure you'll find a way to make him use it for the plot. That's not how fire works. One furnace to light them all. After years and years, everything still works in this place. How is a river of molten gold not melting this makeshift boat made of regular metal? And even if it shouldn't be melting it, shouldn't it be heating the f out of it? Making it impossible for Thorn to ride without getting third degree burns? F***ing fire! Use your f***ing fire! Sure was lucky the dwarves were working on a giant gold statue way back in the day. What the f*** is this bull Wouldn't Smaug have breathed in a bunch of molten gold? That can't be good for the system. Revenge! I will save!
show you revenge! By taking it out on people who are not you. What have we done? We interrupt this very short story's unnecessary second installment to bring you a cliffhanger ending and a year-long wait for the rest of the story. Oh, and also, f*** you. And Warner Brothers, New Line, and MGM? That's like half the studios! Here's Smaug, pissed off at the dwarves, taking everything out on the townspeople of Lake Town for some reason. So, three more passes and this town is done, right? Something tells me the movie will find a way to make it last longer, or even stop it. I'm glad the mayor dick isn't getting away with the gold, but you're telling me the good guy prisoner dude had a window on only one side, but still somehow knew exactly when to drop the makeshift noose for the passing boat? Also, was this Bard's plan when he started making this rope? I'll ease it out the window, and then that fat-ass mayor guy will run right into it. And he'll get pinned to the boat, and it'll rip out the wall of my cell. Easy peasy. If this wasn't his plan, what was the plan? Nearly the entire town is on fire, but thankfully the armory was spared. After clearly devastating the town, Smaug continues his assault on the people who did him no wrong, so that Bard has a chance to find his video game weak spot. Meanwhile, this giant tower, which, if I were a dragon, I'd have destroyed immediately just for its pleasure to burn value, continues to go unburned. It's almost like Bard is in a video game. The dragon has several powers that could end this now, but decides to give him chance after chance. Who are you that would stand against me? I don't know, man, but seems like you could just kill him by the time I snap my fingers. Why isn't this working? You cannot save him from the fire. He will burn. Burn him already! Yay, he killed the dragon. The bard and his son survived this. Dragon poetically falls on the town mayor who was trying to slip off with all the gold. Also, you teased this whole big thing with Smaug at the end of the last movie, only to have him take a couple fire-breathing passes at Lake Town and then die like a chump ass? The ravens of Erebor are returning to the mountain. Not even ten seconds after the dragon died? Those are some attentive-ass ravens. How long has Gandalf been in this cage? What if he has to pee? Has he had any food at all? I sure am glad they spent all this time on this love story. It turned this B-list dwarf into, like, only the third dwarf I can remember in this movie. Christ. We expect this bullsh** now, ex machina. Where's the master? Halfway down the Anduin. How is it that random townsfolk number one saw Bard slay the dragon, but absolutely no one was around to see the dragon fall on the master of Lake Town? You mean to tell me that there are several people in the background here that didn't notice an upteen ton dragon falling on the master? Yeah. Will nobody think of the children? I'm pretty sure this is a Simpsons episode. <laughs> This dwarf notices something he can't possibly notice, hundreds of feet below, and at an angle that is not conducive to noticing things, just so they can run down and see how crazy Thorn has become. Gold. Gold beyond measure. They said he's been down here for days, but is conveniently rambling this exposition just as the other dwarves show up. Bilbo pulls out the Arkenstone to assure the audience that he has it, but this is not a wise move in general, and I'm racking my brain trying to figure out what good it does for his character to whip it out like that. You might smell a bit of dragon. The women can clean now. That's racist. And why are you still alive and not in prison? Also, did we discount Grim and Wormtongue this asshole last movie? Because I don't even care if we did. He's getting another one. What gold is in that mountain is cursed. We will take only what was promised to us. Because that gold is not cursed. I decided to keep that from both of you until it was dramatic enough to reveal. Is future Sauron keeping these super powerful wizards alive for some reason? Wow, good thing Galadriel decided to show up just when this orc decided he'd had enough of Gandalf being lazy in his cage. When you see Galadriel do this, you realize what a selfish elf she's been throughout both trilogies. She had all this power to help people out. And here's the only time she uses her power ever. You know why? Because Gandalf needed her. That's why. Sauron introduces himself via the Lord of the Rings masturbation poem. I am not alone. Because Elrond and Saruman were sitting around twiddling their thumbs while I saved Gandalf. Elrond and Saruman apparently have the ability to strike ghosts with their physical weapons. And since these ghosts are the ring wraiths in Lord of the Rings, I don't quite understand where they go after they get hit. Do they become extra ghosts or something? We have just enough power to be scary. Stabbing! Ghost soldiers! Excitement? Literal Eye of Sauron shows up here, making much of the previous trilogy's first movie seem kind of stupid. But whatever. Bilbo! Galadriel shows two super-powered wizards what real power looks like, completely undermining their power in the LOTR trilogy and making me wonder why she did nothing to help in that entire three-movie war against Sauron. I mean, shit, she totally banished that asshole right here. In the original trilogy, she was like, here's some elf trinkets. Fare thee well. Go back to the war! Phew, glad that little problem with Sauron is over. Without the Ring of Power, Sauron can never again... So, you knew about the Ring of Power and knew his name was Sauron here, but Gandalf still needs to stop years later upon reaching for the ring to go and research what the f*** the ring is and sh**? F*** 
Fuck you, Peter Jackson. You didn't even watch your own goddamn movies. Her strength is failing. Take her to Loch Lorien. Where she'll stay for 60 years, earning a reputation as an elf witch of terrible power, who decides not to ask any questions about Sauron ever again. He must be hunted down and destroyed once and for all. Without the Ring of Power, Sauron can never again hold dominion over Middle-earth. Okay, good enough for me. I won't follow up with any inquiries until it's too late. I need a horse. I need just one goddamn shot in this movie that doesn't look like a painting got jizzed on by the sun. How did ten years pass, but Weta got worse at visual effects? I came to reclaim something of mine. There are gems in the mountain that I too desire. What? How did elf gems get into the Lonely Mountain? Wasn't this just a mining colony? Someone either stole these things and brought them here, and the elves never fought to get them back, or someone brought them here and said, you know what, you have more gold than will ever be necessary in life. How about some gems? And poured them out onto a sea of treasure. My people also have a claim upon the riches in that mountain. Well, that's you, the elves, and the dwarves. Only two more armies to go before we have a movie that matches its title. Be gone! Ere our arrows fly! Okay, maybe this is argumentative, but isn't this a clear case where the non thorn dwarves could talk some sense into this guy? And remove him from power if he continues to have a treasure boner that clouds his thoughts? Be gone! The f***? He's barely 30 seconds ride from the gate, but these assholes have all come up to the balcony already? God damn this movie. Jesus. Absolutely nothing matters. You know what Peter Jackson doesn't do enough of? Weapons handing off and gearing up for war montages. The Arkenstone. One of them has taken it. Why is Thorne so certain one of his fellow dwarves have taken the Arkenstone, and his paranoia hasn't focused on Bilbo, the guy who was in the treasure room longer than anyone? Yeah, yeah, he's underestimating it, but seems like a guy who is out of his mind would accuse everybody of stealing, especially a burglar. Also, if one of his fellow dwarfs did take it, then what? Don't they have all the power? Why wouldn't they use it right now? This is the gateway to reclaiming the lands of Angmar in the north. Sounds important. Too bad I don't know what it means. Earlier, Legolas was talking about how important this Gundabad place was when it came to Angmar. Now the Lonely Mountain is the most important place again. I've heard so many names of so many places at this point, just get to the fighting already! Hey, that's the exact same time the elves are gonna attack. We attack at dawn. That's amazing accidental coordination. Uh, don't you mean Middle Earth Eaters? Also, he's referring to the Weirworms, which, honestly, I'd rather see how they negotiated to ally with these things rather than them being a surprise later. What do you promise a Weirworm when you go to battle? Plenty of Earth to eat when Sauron rises again. <laughs> you like that. This is a fight they cannot win. That won't stop them. Bilbo, you didn't hear that. This is the halfling who stole the keys to my dungeons from under the nose of my gods. Yeesh. You know what? If this series has one saving grace, it's probably Martin Freeman. I'll take a sin off for this guy. Mainly because every time he's on screen, these movies are elevated. Dragon sickness seeps into the hearts of all who come near this mountain. Well, really only two guys, but all of them sounds better. Also, let's not forget the very reason why this whole thing happened. Gandalf met with Thorin and told him to retake the mountain. And his vague reasoning was that darker minds would turn their heads toward it. Forgetting the fact that everyone was so scared of this damn dragon that no one dared go near it. And the idea of Sauron's return was not even considered possible at the time. I don't know what darker minds Gandalf was thinking about, but none of those assholes could have killed the dragon. It took a well-placed arrow in a rumored weak spot to take that f***er down. But Gandalf was worried enough that he started all this sh Never once did he seem concerned about Thorin getting dragon sickness. But, oh well. Gold is evil. I think we all learned something here today. Holy CGI. I will have war. Dwarf reinforcements show up at dawn too, making the Lonely Mountain the same distance from everywhere an army might come from. Basically, the Battle of the Five Armies is a recreation on a much larger scale of the Anchorman fight in Anchorman. Oh, come on! Character says what everyone in the audience is thinking out loud. Also, it's too bad that in their armor, the dwarves and the orcs look exactly the same, because this is going to be a confusing enough battle as it is. Elves decide to help, but do so in a way that renders the elaborate and elegant dwarf Braveheart wall obsolete. So the elves decide at the last minute to not be total dicks and save the day. I honestly didn't expect that, if only because it's a well Peter Jackson has gone back to so many times he has his mail forwarded there. Spinning! Swords! When we were little, my brother and I used to set up army men on opposite ends of the room and then take turns shooting marbles at the other guy's army. I feel like that's exactly what Peter Jackson is doing here, only with CGI, and with a great deal more wasted money involved. My children! Where are my children? Good fathers are always asking this question. Is this a Roland Emmerich movie? I saw them! They were down in the old market! Thanks, random woman! Your amazing knowledge is only surpassed by your amazing hearing in the middle of all this commotion. The Stone Street! The market shall be right! Thanks, random man! If the random woman hadn't told Bard where she last saw his family, this news would be completely immaterial. Somehow, beyond all reasonable doubt, Bard either hears these kids or sees them. But considering how he plans to save them in a second, look how f***ing far away he is. Can he really see or hear his family? Or even have the wherewithal in the middle of a battle to look in this direction? Run away! Run away! 
Oh my god. Troll waits an obscene amount of time to kill these kids. Cigarette! Get down! Get down? How about get out of the way? Do you know for a fact that this cart's going to leapfrog your kids? <laughs> they are dead. Movie that loves killing hates any death that is logical. Take them to the great hall and barricade the door. I can't tell you how many times this movie has made me sigh with frustration. Wait, no, yes I can. 172 and counting. See that you return. I'll get them to safety, sir. You can't paint Bard as this savvy Superman hero and then have him miss or ignore evil dude's obvious evilness to the point of entrusting him with the lives of his children. Out of my way. Skip. The is well, I'm starting to think a toddler wrote this script. Or a YouTube comment troll. Again, the elf flies in at the last second to not be a total asshole. Did you make a Scriptatron 3000 machine with various storytelling elements as buttons and your small child played around with it one day and you were like, damn, this is pretty good. Cause he hit that button twice and you somehow missed it. Are we winning? Ah, forget it, I don't care. Without this hearing the voices and the dialogue we just f***ing saw in the last scene scene, the audience would be totally clueless as to Thorne's state of mind. This treasure will be your death. Apparently all it takes to get rid of dragon sickness is to think really hard about what an asshole you've become. And a fantasy sequence involving metaphorical gold drowning. Mugi nak yashtoki. Azog has been doing nothing but narrate every time we see his dumb ass. Every time I see him, I get weary. Not because he's the bad guy I want to see get killed, but because nothing he does or says is interesting enough to make him a worthwhile villain. Thorin luckily comes to his senses at magic hour. That's pretty cool, I guess. But where did they hang this bell from to smash down the barricade? I actually would have preferred to see them rig this up and make it work rather than this dramatic entry into battle. <laughs> Oh no, 13 more dwarves. The dwarves, they're rallying. They turned their baseball caps inside out? Also, that's all the dwarves needed was their king. The massive outnumbering by the orcs had nothing to do with their asses getting kicked before. And considering what we've been told about dwarves and their thirst for battle, what a bunch of bullshit this emotional spark is. Any man who wants to give their last, follow me! This whole battle is so confusing, I don't even know why there are people still left to fight the orcs. Last we saw, the elves were getting their asses kicked, and Azog told us the dwarves were pretty much spent. Yet none of these armies look like they have any less numbers than before. How did this turn from a landslide orc victory with massive death on all opposing sides to, well, if we just believe in ourselves, we can beat these guys? Come with us, love. No, no, no. You leave an old woman. Don't. Alfred does an Eric Idle playing a woman impression. Makes me realize I could have been watching Monty Python instead. Man, the universe just keeps f***ing gift-wrapping opportunities for this guy to be a dick. If there's time to bro-hug during the battle, it's really more of a skirmish of the five armies, isn't it? There's too many of these buggers, Thorin. I hope you have got a plan. Well, no, I just figured your emotional strength would carry the day. We're going to take out their leader. Magic Ram appears out of nowhere the moment Thorin says this. Suddenly, everyone has rams! Their fellow dwarves didn't bring them, and neither did the elves. So, who had them? It's Thorin! I'm feeling a killer. A dwarling. Despite the fact that no one can tell who is who, even when they're up close, old ass Gandalf can figure out who these dwarves are from a distance while they ride magically appearing rams. Why would you dismount the super fast giant goat of destruction? Raven. Thorin is up there. And Philly and Killy, they're all up there. Oh no, Thorin and the others might only just now be in danger. Goblin mercenaries. No more than a hundred. We'll take care of them. Go! Because a hundred goblin mercenaries are no match for two f***ing dwarves. Meanwhile, in this cutaway, you'll forget Thorin is horribly outnumbered and should probably be dead around Orc 13 or 14 or so. But the magic of editing will make it so that he wins the battle the movie is cutting away from. The master's mantle was there for the taking, and he threw it all away. For what? Bard's family shows up like a thought bubble to prove a point. Where is that Orc? I don't know. I was too busy forgetting you just took out a hundred goblins by your damn selves. Also, another thing I forgot about were those damn wereworms. Those were supposedly going to be a big deal, but they f***ing vanished from the movie as soon as they arrived. Guess they don't give a shit anymore. Plenty of Middle Earth to eat regardless of who's in charge. Every f***ing helpless person in this movie gets saved at the last second by someone who was previously nowhere near the place. It's not amusing anymore. If you come to expect this kind of thing every time, why is it even filmed like it's supposed to be a surprise? How can it be that every orc is worthless except Azoth? Bilbo decides, f*** my sword and ring, I'll let rocks decide this. Thankfully, I'm the Nolan Ryan of Hobbits. God, Bilbo hasn't missed once! This may actually be the least believable thing about this movie, I think. I'm a battle-crazy orc with some sort of multiple-blade killing instrument in my hands. But for Bilbo, because he's so special to this story, I will not use my weapon in a manner for which it was created. Luckily, this bat's last action on Earth is to fly just long enough to get you to safety. Here, motherfucking happens again. Love story that wasted all our time finally ends in the third movie with 40 minutes left. Skip! <laughs> Legolas knew if he stabbed this troll in the brain, the troll's brain powers would transfer to his sword. Then he'd be able to make the troll headbutt a tower to form a bridge that is the exact length he needs to cross it. This movie about elves and dwarves is strangely titled The Hobbit. Fight scene has no tension due to previous trilogy's existence. And once again this troll waited an obscene amount of time to kill the helpless person in front of him. This sh has an unforgivable level of ex machina that even Harry Potter is dubious of it.
Yay, we won. I'll tell you, this movie has violated me so completely, I'm beginning to mistake this for love. What we saw was so fake that it can't even register as cool or an adrenaline rush. I don't think I could be more offended even if Peter Jackson rode into the theater on a horse and started beating us with that carrot he always eats in these movies. I guess somewhere there's a battle still raging with the dwarves and the other hundred thousand orcs that were around here, but none of that matters anymore. Here come the eagles, still clearly worried about those men and their great bows of yew, which would have shot them down if they brought Gandalf and crew closer to the Lonely Mountain. Can't we just admit they only show up when the story calls for it, and let go of all those stupid reasons why they didn't fly them further in the first movie? Let the hate flow through you! Bayorn jumps off the eagle and turns himself into a bear, which allows him to survive this jump. Here's one of the trilogy's smartest moments, and we'd maybe even consider taking a sin off for it. But later, Azog is going to be trapped under the ice and drowning and still come back for another attack. So they waste the smart moment in order to do something dumb later. And I think that's worth two goddamn sins, goddammit! I bet you thought after we gave the last thing two sins because of this, that we wouldn't sin this. But you're wrong. A live Azog is a sinful Azog. Man, I knew the eagles are dicks, but not one of them could have helped Thorn out here? The eagles. The eagles are here. Yeah, Bilbo is right. The eagles are here. Why aren't they using their healing tears to bring Thorn back to life? Oh, you say that's ridiculous? Welcome to how I felt every time someone got saved in the last minute of this movie. Go north. Find the Dunedain. There's a young ranger amongst them. You should meet him. Uh, no. Look, I'm already giving lots of leeway here that Aragorn is at least 60 in The Lord of the Rings kicking all that ass. But this bullshit right here is an absolutely ludicrous way to connect the two movie trilogies. Hey, go find this kid and be his pal. He's gonna be great one day. I know this because I too saw the Lord of the Rings trilogy. No, wait. Also, why bother to tell your elf son to go find a human boy? Out of all the places and people to suggest he should spend time. You don't even have to read the books to find this offensive in every way. Besides, in Fellowship, it's not until they get to the Council of Elrond that they even meet. Not one scene in that movie suggests they had a long history together. F*** me right in the beard. Damn, I should have also told him about Frodo. Well, I'm sure he'll meet him someday. Look, I haven't been able to find anything confirming that this is Brian Cranston, but wouldn't it be just like a f***ing movie to put him here for five seconds and then pretend he doesn't exist? You know what The Hobbit could have used? Some damn Brian Cranston, that's what. Did you tell the others I said goodbye? You can tell them yourself. Because in this movie, everything is on demand. Need someone to save you? Click a button. The eagles soar in. Need to make a point? Click a button. Your family is there. The borders of the Shire. Is this a good time to ask whatever happened to Dane, Thorne's cousin? He just kind of disappeared from the movie. He's the new king, right? Ah, oh, well. You don't really suppose, do you, that all your adventures and escapes were managed by their luck? Well, 95% of them were, for sure. Magic rings should not be used lightly, but... I'm definitely not going to investigate this ring that you have for another 60 years, and only after I've almost touched it to see the Eye of Sauron. The fact that Sauron needs a ring to rule the world and just happened to appear right after our adventure in Gollum's cave does not make me suspicious in the slightest. Good day. Gandalf is worried now, but we'll completely forget about this by the time Fellowship comes along. Sin the 13-minute credits? Send the 13 minute credits. For none now live. Hey, we need to tell the projectionists there's sound but no picture. Oh. One ring to rule them all. So wait, the one ring is supposed to control everyone who wore the other rings, right? We're told later that the race of men were turned into the Nazgul, but it didn't affect the elves and dwarves at all? Apparently Sauron put on his ring and tried to control the dwarves and elves by yelling, Go ring! and all he got was sparks flying out of his fingers. What the f*** is Sauron reaching for? Just kill the guy! You have this huge mace for killing! Reading. And I don't expect I shall return. In fact, I mean not to. After Bilbo's unnerving proclamation, Gandalf apparently said, Dude, you need to smoke some weed. <laughs> and turn them all to stone! Bilbo then said, Kids, I'll tell part two of this story next year, and I'll finally finish it the year after that. Because even short stories are best when told in trilogies. When you see Gandalf magically transport like this, don't you wonder why he doesn't use magic more often in crucial spots during the trilogy? What about this ring of yours? Is that staying too? It's in an envelope over there on the mantelpiece. Gandalf should probably know that that's not true because Bilbo had no time to put it in an envelope, but he goes over to the mantelpiece expecting to find it anyway. What the f*** was Frodo doing for the last 20 minutes after Bilbo disappeared? Looking for Bilbo in places other than Bilbo's house? Gandalf sees the freaking eye of Sauron when he stupidly tries to touch the ring, but yet he still needs to do research to figure out what the ring is. Doesn't he have more than enough information at this point to give Frodo a head start before the ring wraiths show up? This is the only time in the movie where the Nazgul just straight up murder a dude. All he said was who goes there and he gets snuffed out. This could have been the guy who knew all things Baggins and they just destroyed their best lead. Yes, Pippin! My point is, he's clearly overreacting! I guess Farmer Maggot gave up? Or at the very least his side did? Get off the road! Quick! Convenient hiding tree is convenient. Also, this one of the nine is terrible at his job. Isn't the ring supposedly calling to Sauron? I mean, why is he even sniffing? 
If his nose worked, he clearly would smell the hobbits, or the ring. If the Nazgul can't detect the ring two feet in front of their faces, why didn't Gandalf just find a container for the ring that he could magically seal, or at least lock, and throw away the key so no one could get into it? Frodo wouldn't be tempted to wear it, and no one could possibly detect it, and the road to Mordor becomes that much easier. Then he falls for the old toss-something-to-distract-the-bad-guy trick from every other movie ever. It went from day to night pretty fast here, but maybe that much time has really passed in this case. So if that's true, has the ring wraith been chasing the hobbits for several hours without making one bit of headway? And only now are Merry and Pippin asking what the hell is going on? Bad guy doesn't like water cliché. Peter Jackson tries to one-up M. Night and Hitchcock by gnawing on a carrot during his director's cameo. If the ring can will itself to land perfectly on Frodo's finger, then why the f*** can't it just will itself to fly off into the air and roll its happy way back to Mordor? How did Sam, Merry, and Pippin know Frodo was up here? They didn't call out to Frodo when he reappeared downstairs, so were they just running around crashing into every closed door until they finally ran into Frodo? At all times they feel the presence of the ring, drawn to the power of the One. Until it's convenient for them not to be drawn to it. If you look really hard, you can see Tom Bombadil in this shot. Either you don't care if Gandalf dies, in which case, just kill him. Or you want to keep him alive for some reason, in which case, don't put him in a prison that basically anyone would die in at the first thunderstorm. I know the hobbits are here for comic relief, for the most part, at least early on, but damn. Nobody is anywhere near that stupid to light a fire on a tower at night when you're hiding from supernatural hunting machines. Nobody. Also, Strider says he's just going to have a look around when he leaves the hobbits. Where did he go and how far away? He didn't see the fire immediately and start running back to slap all the hobbits for starting one? And he didn't notice the Nazgul anywhere while he was looking around? After we've seen them straight up murder people for asking who goes there, the Nazgul finally find the hobbits and decide to go into a slow attack formation so that Strider can show up in time to save the day. Oh, these bad guys are afraid of water and fire. Wow, so Earth is like the only major element they're not afraid of? He's been stabbed by a mortal blade. You know, the kind that dissolved dramatically after you identify it? Do you know the Athelas plant? Athelas? Kingsfoil. Kingsfoil, ah, it's a weed. Weed is the answer to everything. Not only must not. Ah, I see. Elf horses have turbo mode. Well, we're only an hour in, but it's already clear that good old H2O is the real hero of Middle Earth. Arwen has the ability to summon a tsunami of water horses. What a strangely specific ability. Aquila X Machina. Is there really nothing that Sauron can do about the eagle? Isn't he a powerful wizard? Doesn't he cause a f***ing avalanche from hundreds of miles away later in the movie? He spins Gandalf around and closes doors with his mind, but an eagle is just too tall of an order. Destroy it! No. So Elrond knows this is a ring of supreme evil. All the evil in the world can be ended by throwing the ring in the fire, but he lets Isildur go without a fight. He could have thrown him into the fire and then ran out screaming, Oh no, Isildur fell into the fire. Whatever will we do? Oh, the humanity. You have my sword. And you have my bow. And my axe. You mean the axe you just shattered while trying to destroy the ring? You shall be the fellowship of the ring. Roll credits. Oh, wait. Where did they get sausages? Did they make them themselves out here in the wild? Or are they carrying raw meat casings for 40 days without refrigeration and then eating them? So, Gandalf, you tried to lead them over Garadras. These birds have no f***ing clue that that's where Gandalf decided to go. They flew past them. They may have seen them go run and hide, but they weren't around to hear Gandalf say where they were going to go next. Let us go through the mines of Moria. Let the ring bearer decide. What a cop out. No. How does Gimli not know about this? Or Gandalf? This obviously happened a long time ago. Sure, there's no internet or phones, but word should have traveled faster than this. These hobbits over here on the left give no indication whatsoever that a cave troll is about to peek around the corner. Why isn't Frodo's blade glowing right now? Are all the orcs dead? Or right now? Right now there's definitely some orcs close enough to cause that blade to glow blue, right? Gandalf said it was a four-day trip through the mines, but it takes the Fellowship like a couple of hours, if that, to get to the other side. It's a four-day journey to the other side. Eight that are here, yet nine there were set out from Rivendell. Tell me, where is Gandalf? Dude, this movie is three hours. Couldn't you just ask where Gandalf is right off the bat? For the mirror shows many things. Why would the mirror show his friends making troubled glances? What can be learned from that? I could have told you that. He will try to take the ring. You know of whom I speak. I'd love to tell you which person by name, but I'm afraid he'll hear this telepathic communication that only you can hear. Not dark, but beautiful and terrible as the dawn! Terrible as the dawn? The f*** is that supposed to mean? Oh, now it's glowing again, and long before the orcs are even in view. The uruk throws a shield at Aragorn's neck that has a neck-sized hole at the end of it. Uh. Frodo screams and stares at a drowning Sam for several seconds before helping him. Jeez, how deep can a hobbit reach into the water from a boat? 
previously on Lord of the Rings. Middle-earth rules say that a falling wizard can catch up to his falling sword and a falling balrog even when those things have a 20 second head start. I know Gollum's not exactly smart, but why would he talk so loudly to himself if he's trying to actually sneak up on the hobbits and surprise them? Get down! Oh. Sam is addicted to Gollum's. And the union of the two towers. Roll credits. Oh, wait. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! Looks like meat is back on the menu for about ten orcs. The other ones in the background appear to be happy with their maggoty bread. No one's gonna save you now. There is no way that one of the riders of Rohan was able to throw his spear from this distance to kill a crouching orc. Make it look like the character died when 90% of the audience knows he didn't die cliche. Red sun rises. Blood has been spilled this night. Is Legolas serious? So every time blood spills, a red sun rises? So there should be a red sun for like, at least half the trilogy, right? I would cut off your head, dwarf, if it stood but a little higher from the ground. You would die before your stroke fell. I know we need to establish that Legolas has become a blood brother to Gimli, but this is way out of line for his character and stupid. I mean, is this Legolas Skywalker? We are no spies. The first clue should have been when we hailed you while your backs were turned and we had no reason to give away our position. We left none alive. Instead of asking the riders if they remember killing people as memorable as hobbits, or if they even remember stacking two small childlike creatures who don't look one bit like orcs on the death pile, Eomer chooses the all I remember is that everybody died story to keep us in quote unquote suspense. In five seconds, Gimli finds a hobbit belt in an orc stack. I agree that Aragorn is this badass ranger dude, but the hobbit's track should have long been trampled over by horses and men dragging dead orcs to the flaming death mound. <laughs> First off, the Nazgul really need to stop shrieking and giving away their position. Secondly, you tracked Frodo to the marshes and once again can't locate the ring mere feet in front of you. Mr. Frodo! Also, a closed fist is enough to quiet a powerful magical evil ring. This forest is old. How old is it? Very old. How the hell does this actually work? How did they not see them? Wow, the flag waited until the perfect moment to break her spirit. I guess Gandalf used a Jedi mind trick of some sort to make this guy forget that he was a wizard and that the walking stick was a magical staff. Gandalf clearly walks into the hall with his staff out in the open, and it's not entirely hidden as he continues to walk towards the king, but nonetheless, it's a total surprise to Grima when Gandalf exposes his staff to show he means business. I told you to take the wizard's staff! Is the staff the sole source of Gandalf's power? Didn't he lose the staff and fall with the Balrog for days and days and fight that demon with a sword? This fall would kill some people and break bones in pretty much anyone except Grima Wormtongue. Enough blood has been spilled on his account. I agree with the merciful Aragorn here, you shouldn't just go around killing dudes, but why should he be let go? Also, they didn't have to give him a f***ing horse, did they? You have 2,000 good men riding north as we speak. Does this look like 2,000 men? Where did Aragorn learn to count? When last I looked, Theoden. Not Aragorn was king of Rohan. Yeah, well, last I looked, Theoden got his f***ing kingly mind all invaded by the evil sorcerer and shit, so maybe shut your pie hole and let someone who hasn't f***ed up lately do the planning. Aw, she thinks she's Mulan. It is a dangerous road to take through. Is there a place in all of Middle-earth except maybe the Shire that isn't dangerous when you walk through it? Wicked Tracy first! Andy Serkis isn't getting nominated for an Oscar in this scene. I realize marching to Mordor must be brutally boring, but none of these soldiers looks up to see the not really even hiding hobbits? Most useless love triangle in the history of plot. I'm pretty sure Legolas can shoot arrows faster than this, but I guess we need more time to get acquainted with the wargs. You know, I believe a lot of things in these movies. Magic, talking trees, immortality, evil spirits. But in no way do I believe Legolas got on this horse in the manner depicted. Who the f is that? And it's not Gimli. <laughs> Even in Middle-earth, horrible creatures bent on death would rather bark at you than try and kill you first. For the third time in the series, and the second time in this movie, yet another character supposedly dies when we know full well he doesn't. Where is he? He fell. You had no chance anyway, cliché. Helm's Deep has one weakness. Helm's Deep was built with the same flaw as the Death Star. Tens of thousands. But my lord, there is no such force. This is a great reveal for the audience, but you can't seriously be expecting me to believe that Wormtongue either lives in this tower or comes here every morning for work and has no idea there are tens of thousands of soldiers outside. He no longer cares for growing things. Did this movie just turn into Fern Gully? It would grieve you then 
to learn that he is dead. How does Wurren travel fast enough for Faramir to know that Boromir died alone in the forest, but not fast enough for that message to also contain the words, by the way, don't kill or capture the two ring-bearing hobbits that were friends of your dead brother Boromir? To enter the Forbidden Pool bears the penalty of death. The Forbidden Pool? Are you making this shit up as you go along? Discount Kristen Stewart. Well, that's a foul. Wait, didn't we just see them do this already? I mean, I know Aragorn said hold after the old dude accidentally shot his arrow, but does hold mean don't fire? Or does it mean everyone put your bows down completely so that I need to give you an entirely separate command in order for you to raise them again? He's just now telling them this. That guy must be half elf, half Wilhelm. The Ents take forever to do anything. Why? Because the story's not ready for them yet. But it doesn't want you being all surprised when they show up later. Worth taking a long time to say. Okay, so speak English then. All the Ents nodded when you made that You Aren't Orcs proclamation, so all of you understood that. You had one job, Legolas. One job. No one could possibly fall for the Aragorn might be dead routine at this point, but the movie keeps wasting time on it. How does Treebird not know this? Don't the trees talk to each other? Wouldn't the Ents have gotten word that this was happening? Well, here we are at Helm's Deep the next morning. Where's that red sun that signals the blood spilling that Legolas was talking about? This asshole probably still can't detect the ring. When this ring was forged, it was made to withstand almost all destruction and apparently any mud and filth that was covering it just a minute ago. Powerful seeing stone thrown out of Sauron's tower so that Pippin can advance the plot through stupidity again. Andy Serkis isn't getting nominated for an Oscar in this scene. The stars are veiled. There are stars all over the sky! Oh no, who's gonna make the trip to Mordor to throw this thing in the fire? I mean, it must have similar powers to the One Ring if it can make Pippin try and steal it from Gandalf. Pippin doesn't remember that in Raiders of the Lost Ark, that didn't work. What did you tell him about Frodo and the Ring? Oh no! What did he tell him? He told Sauron nothing. Oh, why was I worried? Does Pippin know any more than Sauron does right now? Pippin doesn't know where Frodo is, or even if he's still alive. And he should know that Pippin isn't the hobbit he's looking for because Frodo has put on the ring several times and he has seen him. Why should we ride to the aid of those who did not come to ours? Oh my god, you asshole. Because the entire plot of the two towers, that's why. Your ass should be dead like three times over. The enemy thinks you have the ring. Seriously? Can Sauron not distinguish between seeing stone communication and ring communication? Don't you think he'd have the metadata to understand which is which? The elves are dicks. It's pretty to look at, but Minas Tirith is definitely the least practical city ever built. It's basically shoots and ladders come to life. To deny the return of the king. Roll credits. Oh, wait. Sauron has yet to reveal his deadliest servant. The witch king of Angmar. You've met him before. He stabbed Frodo on Weathert. So he's revealed his deadliest servant then, right? Also, even though no mortal can apparently kill him, he was easily fought off by Aragorn with a couple of waves of fire. I can feel his blade. Yet he can't detect you or the ring, even though you're literally 30 feet from the gate. Are there really people just hanging out around the beacons just in case they need to get lit? A lot of these are on top of snowy mountains. Who's camping out in the very unlikely event they will need to light them? And who did they piss off to draw that job? Oh, there's another guy that's half man, half Wilhelm. Is there anything the Nazgul aren't afraid of? Almost false, but obviously wasn't going to fall cliche. What of the wizard? I will break him. Well, unless he starts shining a light in your face, or throws a glass of water at you. You wish now that our places had been exchanged, that I had died and Boromir had lived. I wish that- Yes, but do we really give a shit, though? Forgetting for a moment that there are no breadcrumbs anywhere on Sam's cloak during the argument, Gollum threw the breadcrumbs on Sam's back, not his front. This is a pretty shot, but the logistics of getting up to this cliff and the reasons for holding this meeting in this location are questionable at best. The horses are restless. What are you, the narrator? Oh, I see, there's a road here. The existence of which totally makes sense. I cannot give you what you see. But I hear Faramir single. He leaves because he must. And there's no reason telling you why he left, because quite frankly, I can't believe it either. But if you must know, he's summoning a ghost army to help us. The only horse to return to the main gate after the slaughter just happens to be dragging Faramir's body. He's alive. He needs medicine, my lord. How the fuck does he know? And if so, why is he the only one that can figure this out? You would think with that kind of destructive power, the siege of the city would be pretty quick, but nope. It goes on for hours and hours. Abandon your post! Oh. oh, so this is the moment when Denethor's gone too far. Prepare for battle! Also, Gandalf wasn't around anywhere when they dragged Faramir into the castle, but then shows up just in time to beat Denethor with his staff? What was he doing this whole time? Ah! I guess Gollum can just fall hundreds of feet down a mountain, no problem. This battering ram is truly awesome. 
It's a feat of imagination, but wow, someone actually thought to spend way more time on this than necessary. Let's make it huge, and then we'll carve it into a wolf, and oh, oh, let's put a fiery stove in its mouth. Let me get this straight. So, after Gandalf knocked Denethor unconscious, no one decided to get Faramir any medicine? They didn't just leave him outside in the white tree court, did they? Arise! Arise, riders of Theoden! How many people of Gondor do you think died in the time Theoden was giving this f***ing speech? Jeez, this is taking forever. No giant CGI elephants were injured in the making of this scene. Do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. Nazgul refers to himself in the third person. Die now. Well, nobody's stopping you at the moment. If you keep talking, though. I am no man. Well, good for Eowyn. Good for gender equality. But her triumph was totally made possible by A, the Nazgul's stupidity, and B, Mary's leg stabbing. I think Eowyn is a badass woman and deserves praise, but she totally deserved to kill this asshole without assistance so that this line has more power. I would feel great relief that the Witch King is dead, but he never really did anything of note in the entire trilogy except stab Frodo's shoulder. I think everyone from the Wilhelm line died in this trilogy. Oh, hey, I'm a hobbit. I take 12-inch steps, and I'm just gonna waddle out the front door of Minas Tirith. Oh, what's this underneath a dead orc? My best friend in the entire world? In Middle-earth, you can always rely on the infighting of bad guys. Oh, come on. I know it's a nice surprise that Sam has the ring in his pocket, but there's no way he would have been able to cut the webs from Frodo's neck, then grab the ring and the sword all before the orcs came down to take him. In fact, when the orcs do take him, there's no sign that the webs have been cut or moved in any way. There's so many of them. Yeah, why didn't any of these millions of soldiers get sent to Gondor? Frodo has passed beyond my sight. Interested in learning more about Gandalf's sudden ability to see great distances? Well, f*** you. Been blind to all else that moves. A diversion. Man, Legolas is f***ing useless when he's not fighting. He's like Sigourney Weaver in Galaxy Quest. Sauron fails at Blue's Clues. He's right in front of you! You'd think this might be a good time for Gandalf to use his magic light power again, but no. He doesn't. <laughs> Eagles. The eagles won't fly over the lands of men for fear of being shot down by arrows. But now they have no trouble flying all the way to the mother black gate of Mordor where orcs and Nazgul and Sauron live. Why didn't Sauron seal off the entrance to Mount Doom with a few well-placed boulders? Why does this place still have a convenient walkway where you can throw rings and incriminating photographs into the fires below? Fault stops right where the good guys are. And I guess they knew they were safe because they didn't move an inch. These guys died still not knowing exactly where that ring ever was. Okay, now it's over, right? Fade to black, the ring is destroyed, everyone's reunited. Oh, All right, well, this is clearly the end. Pulling back to the map, closing narration. Okay, okay, give the hobbits their little return to town. Have some drinks, sure. How do you pick up the- Holy sh this movie refuses to end. It is time, Frodo. Frodo springs this sh just as he's about to get on the boat to the Grey Havens. Frodo's a dick to friends. Okay, surely now we're done. Frodo and everyone else is on the boat, hobbits are crying, sun is setting, music swells. Oh my god, you horse! How's it even possible to build a house where a hobbit still has to duck to get through the entrance? I know now why you cry, but it's something I can never do. Ooh, sounds delish. Let me just toss some jeans on and I'll... Wait a minute, who is this? Hello, that sounds like a pig fainting. You look like a gelfling. Smell like gelfling. Maybe you are a gelfling. My name is Carl. I love gold! The look of it, the taste of it, the smell of it, the texture. I love gold so much that I even lost my genitalia in an unfortunate smelting accident.
can't look him uh, right in the eyes either. Can't look him in the eye? No, no, that's they, a fact. I saw on PBS. They get confused and their wires get crossed. You got to look like the chin. Like it looks like I'm looking at you, yeah, but yeah. I'm looking at your chin. Anybody? The important thing you guys got to keep in mind is, is that these things gossip. They get together and they gossip. They are very ornery, by the way, so you got to be very careful with these little guys. Okay. Okay. Safety Remember, first. Safety is it. first, all right? Yeah, I want up. somebody with a f***ing tranquilizer gun ready to knock this out. Yes. The thing is, this is their gift, okay? They're built to be thrown like a lawn dart. They're top heavy like a lawn dart, so they're built for accuracy. Oh my god, does this, can we bowl with this guy? That's his f brother, Rob. His brother's the bowling ball. The, the, the brother, you put a skateboard on him, you strap him to a skateboard, you toss him down an alley at some pins. No shit, that's what interesting. You seem familiar with my name. We don't know a thing about each other. I don't know where we're meeting. I don't even know your name. I know you're an army doctor and you've been invalided home from Afghanistan. I know you've got a brother who's worried about you, but you won't go to him for help because you didn't approve of him, possibly because he's an alcoholic, more likely because he recently walked out on his wife. And I know that your therapist thinks you're limp psychosomatic, quite correctly, I'm afraid. It's enough to be going on with, don't you think? The name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. Afternoon. Winter is upon us. And winter is coming. I am not alone. You are not alone. We are going to die. I am the sword in the darkness. I am the watcher on the walls. I am the shield that guards the realms of men. I am the light of my life. And I am the night's watch. For this night and all the nights to come. And you have my bow. And my axe. And I don't like to think what Thorin will do when he finds out what you've done. I'm not afraid of Thorin. Yeah. You will be. If you build, you will come. Welcome to Rivendell. Mr. Anderson. Bye bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Take it away. It would take a very long time. Goodbye. Let's be able to skewer the wild boar. I think there's more to this hobbit than meets the eye. It reads, Here may be found the last words of Joseph of Arimathea. He who is valiant and pure of spirit may find the Holy Grail in the castle of... Ah! I'm on Mr. Murphy's waiting for you. I can't. It's too big. Size matters not. Look at me. Just me by my size, do you? Hmm? Hmm. And where you should not. Who's willing to die, who's gonna win that itch? And I know if I'm gonna have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Mm, young Master Glenn, I'm glad you come. We need your help. Give me your hand, give me your other hand! 